I'm Captain Bill of the Nautical School of Maritime Licensing at nauticalschool.com. This module will introduce you to the nautical chart. We'll start off with chart 13205 for Block Island Sound. What is a nautical chart? The nautical chart is your most valuable tool after your boat. Nautical charts are simply maps of the waterways created specifically for marine navigation and are oriented to represent true depictions of Earth, such as you would see if you were looking down from high above the water. They show water depth, navigational aids, such as lights, buoys, and day marks, the direction that the compass should point to in the charted area, and other relevant information that can be used for navigating, such as water tanks that are visible from the water, large chimney stacks listed on charts along with bridges, buildings, spires, antennas, etc. A chart is used by mariners to plot courses through open bodies of water, as well as highly trafficked areas. Because of its critical importance in promoting safe navigation, the nautical chart has a certain level of legal standing and authority. Captains properly call these maps of the water charts, which is simply a maritime tradition, similar to calling a rope a line when it is brought aboard a boat, and will be used to tie that boat up to the dock or a berth. When starting out with a new chart, the first thing to do is study the title block, as we see here. The type of information you'll find on the title block includes the type of projection and the scale of the chart, in this case, one to 80 thousands. The title block also shows that sounding on this chart are in feet at mean lower low water. The chart also shows the Colreg's demarcation line. This is where the captain switches between the international version of the rules of the road, usually associated with open areas with deep water, and the United States inland version Being able to identify and understand exactly where the coal rig's demarcation line is located is of critical importance. The coal rig's demarcation line pertains to the 38 collision avoidance rules used between vessels. The proper name for these are navigation rules or collision avoidance regulations and are abbreviated the coal rigs. These 38 rules are used by vessels on the high seas and open oceans. There are also another set of 38 rules called the Inland Navigation Rules to be used in inland areas of the United States. The Colreg's demarcation lines denotes which of the two sets of rules the captain is to follow depending on which side of the line he's on. When starting out with a new chart, it's a good idea to Study your chart. All notes on chart should be read carefully and fully, as they may cover important information that cannot be graphically represented, such as information applying to an extended length of a river or a channel. The information you want to look for on a chart includes the date of the chart, along with its name and edition number. The date of the chart is of utmost importance as charts must be corrected using the local notice to mariners to make sure that they have the most current information on them. The scale of the chart is also shown as an important feature in understanding how a chart is laid out. Scale is the ratio of distance that is used on a particular chart, whereby one to 80 thousands would mean that the distance covered by one inch on that respective chart would require 80,000 inches in reality to reach that same distance. Next, we'll take a look at the latitude and longitude scales. The vertical scale on the left-hand side is called the latitude scale and measures distance from the equator to the North Pole in 90 equal parts called degrees. Each degree is further broken down into 60 equal parts called minutes. The latitude scale has alternating black, white, black, white bars as the longitude scale does that represents the minute of that respective degree. The unique thing about the latitude scale is that one minute of latitude is equal to one nautical mile on that respective chart. Keep in mind that each minute of latitude is further broken down into tenths of a minute. Remembering that 
One minute of latitude is equal to one nautical mile. Not only is this value useful in plotting a fix, but also in measuring distance on that chart. Again, each of those alternating black, white, black, white bars on the vertical scale are called minutes and equal one sixtieth of a degree. One nautical mile corresponds to one minute of latitude. Thus, degrees of latitudes are approximately 60 nautical miles apart. By contrast, the distance of nautical miles between degrees of longitude is not constant because lines of longitude become closer together as they converge at the poles. Distance on any chart can be easily measured by using a pair of dividers and either side of the latitude scale. On both the latitude and longitude scales, minutes are shown as a two-digit number followed by an apostrophe. Each minute is further broken down into tenths of minutes. And since you already know that one minute of latitude is equal to one nautical mile, a tenth is equal to one-tenth of a nautical mile, five, five-tenths of a nautical mile, and so forth. When discussing the longitude scale, we have to now start at the prime meridian. The way it works is there's an imaginary line that's north-south at Greenwich, England, and it splits the Earth into two halves side by side. To the right is the eastern hemisphere, and to the west, where we are, is the western hemisphere. The longitude scale goes from zero degrees at the prime meridian, running both to the right and to the left, through 180 degrees on the back of the planet, called the International Date Line. Just like the latitude scale, the longitude scale also has 60 minutes for each degree of longitude. As discussed, the Earth is cut into two hemispheres, the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere. Where on the Western Hemisphere? When looking up a coordinate, either on the latitude or longitude scale, always go to the beginning of that respective minute. In this case, you see two minutes, followed by three minutes, four minutes, and five minutes of westerly longitude. How do I know the longitude is westerly? Well, the numbers increase from right to left, indicating we're in the Western Hemisphere. At various places throughout the chart, you'll find a group of three concentric circles with ruler-like hash marks. This is called a compass rose, and it indicates true north, the outer circle, and magnetic north, the inner circles. The outermost circle on the compass rose with the star on top indicates true or geographic north. Surrounding the crosshair at the center of the compass rose, you'll find information regarding the variation for that particular chart, along with its annual increase or decrease in variation. Finally for this module, as we've seen, there's a lot of information on charts that is useful only if the mariner takes the time to carefully study the charts and knows what he or she is looking at. The green line you see running roughly east and west has a notation that says C note D. That line is giving a recommended traffic route for deep drafted vessels as you see here. In our next module, we'll cover 24 hour time, military time, how to add and subtract same, as well as a new formula called 60 D Street. I'm Captain Bill of the Nautical School of Maritime Licensing at nauticalschool.com.